For unordered categorical data, you can use the chi-squared test in just the same way. So this would be an example of unordered data. Blood group probably doesn't follow a particular ordering. We would just use a chi-squared test on those frequencies to see if the proportion of diseased animals was higher on any particular blood group. That's the chi-squared test results with the expected numbers under the null hypothesis and we get a significant test statistic. But unlike before, where we didn't get a warning, we now get a warning that 25% of the cells have got expected counts of less than five. Chi-squared may not be a valid test. So it's a bit worried about the low values of these expected values. You don't want more than 25% to be less than five, and it's picked that up here. So that's uh, a strong hint that you should try perhaps to do a different test, well, to use basically the Fisher's exact test, which will give you an exact p-value. And that also comes out as significant, so it gives us sort of reassurance. I think it's only coincidental. It's the same as the chi-squared, almost the same as the chi-squared test. So from that, we can, assume, we can conclude that the blood groups differ significantly between the diseased and the healthy animals. And of course, if we've got unordered categorical data like that, we might want to compare a pair of categories so that we know exactly which of the blood groups was you know, low or high because we've got a significant difference between the blood groups. So here, what I've done is I've grouped all the other blood groups together and looked at blood group A, B and the numbers diseased and healthy. And so we just do a chi-squared test based on that frequency table we get a p-value, again we get a warning, so we should really base the results on the more um, exact test, the Fisher's exact test. Actually now, the p-value isn't significant, so we've got quite a difference compared to the chi-squared test, so it illustrates that sometimes this warning is valid and uh, it's going to give us inappropriate results. Ordinal data is data where you've got categories, but they follow some sort of ordering. For example, if you've, you're looking at two types of mice, mutant and wild type, and there was some symptom that they uh, may or may not experience, but it might be either moderate or severe. So you could consider sort of the difference between no symptom, moderate and severe as an ordered category, and sometimes that's called ordinal data. So there's two questions you might consider asking about that data. You might just say, are there differences in the outcomes between the groups and ignore the ordering? And you could then do a chi-squared or Fisher's exact test, just as we've done before, which give just about significant results, a bit borderline for the Fisher's exact test. Or you could ask the question of the symptoms more severe in the mutant animals than the wild type animals or vice versa. So that takes the order nature of the data into account and it's probably more appropriate. One of the tests available to do that is the Mind Mantel Heinzel, two more statisticians who put their name to this test, the Mantel Heinzel chi squared test. This is SAS output. You can add an option in SAS to add the Mantel Heinzel test to the chi squared output and it gives it here. So we had a sort of result that was a bit borderline if we didn't take into account the ordinal nature of the data, this chi-squared test result, but then when we did, the p-value became 0.01, a bit more than 0.01, so it became more significant, so uh, it can make a, a difference. So definitely worth taking into account the ordered nature of the data. Another thing to mention about ordinal data is um, that you can, if you've got more than about five categories, it's worth considering it as non-parametric data and uh, analysing it based on the ranks using, for two groups, a Mann-Whitney U test, or for three groups, you could use a Kruskal wallace test. Um, but you'd have to, rather than just use descriptions, you'd have to uh, apply a number, code each of them with a, with a number, so you've actually got numbers that can be ranked. So that, that's definitely worth considering as well. There's no reason why you shouldn't do that. But I probably would only do that if there's more than about five ordered outcomes. And as I said, yeah, if you've got three or more groups, then you can use the Kruskal wallace test, followed up by Mann-Whitney U tests to compare each pair of groups if you get a significant result.
We're not going to cover this technique this time, but I should mention there is a modelling technique known as ordinal logistic regression, which is another way of modelling ordinal data, uh, which works quite well. It's, I'm really just bringing these up because if you, you might see it mentioned in the literature and think, well, why is somebody using that when uh, you were taught to use the man went in a U test or a mantle Heinzel test, but uh, there is yet another way of doing it in a modelling form. Occasionally, our ordinal data is going to be um, paired, so we'll use the same scenario where you've got measurements take or um, an observation made on animals before an intervention and after an intervention. So if they were sort of coded in order of the severity of some symptom, so this ranges from none at one to very severe, which is coded as five, and the others, moderate, mild, are somewhere in between. Then the best thing to do is to take the difference in these coded sort of ordinal categories and then work with these using a Wilcoxon signed rank test. So you treat it as non-parametric, take the difference, and then you can do a Wilcoxon signed rank test to see if this the difference in the scores is significantly different from zero. And again, um, you could also analyse paired ordinal data using ordinal logistic regression, but I'll not look at that till next time.